Hello, and welcome to your logistic regression lecture in Python. And as usual, I'm going to start out by running all of our import statements to make sure that those are in. Um, and today we're going to build some logistic regression models. Uh, so let's load in our data and take a look at it. Okay, so this data should look familiar. We're basically looking at a data set that is very small that talks about whether or not customers upgraded to a premium fashion service based on their age, their income in thousands, and the number of months they've been subscribed to a non-premium service. So similar to how we did with regular linear regression, we're first going to take a variable, we'll call it predictors, and put in all of the columns that we want to use as predictors in our model. So in this case, that's age, income, and months subbed. And then, as with linear regression as well, in any of the predictive models that we're building, we want to do some kind of model validation. So we're going to, in this case, do train test split. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And again, remember that we have four outputs, the train and test set for X and the train and test set for Y. And we're going to give it our predictors and then our actual outcome. Um, I'm going to go with an 80-20 split here, but you can change that with the test size argument. Okay, so now that we have our train and our test set, we can go ahead and do all of our pre-processing, which in this case will include z-scoring. So in order to z-score, remember we have to avoid data leakage because if we z-score incorrectly, it can cause some information from the test set to leak in to the model. So we're gonna create our z-score object. I'm gonna call it z-score equals standard scalar. And then, of course, we have to fit that z-score object, but remember we only ever fit on the training set, so we're going to say z-score.fit x, oops, there we go, x train. And now we are going to transform the actual train and test set to get the z-score. So remember, dot fit just calculates means and standard deviations, and now we're going to actually create them. So I'm going to say x z test equals z score dot transform um, x test and remember all of our variables here are continuous so we're good with z scoring all of them and then we'll say x z train equals z score dot transform x train beautiful so now we have done our train test split we have z scored and we can run this and we're ready to build our model so in sk learn i've mentioned this a couple of times before but the beauty of it is that your workflow for creating a predictive model is pretty much the same no matter what model you're using so this is going to look really Really similar to what we did with linear regression. We are going to create an empty model, we're going to fit it, and then we're going to predict using that model and then assess the performance of those predictions. So in this case, we're going to make a model, I'm going to call it LR, and we're going to say logistic regression. Um, and then close those parentheses, we can go ahead and fit that. So remember, we are going to fit on the z score data. So we're going to say LR.fit x z train y train beautiful so let's go ahead and run these so we now have a fitted logistic regression model okay now that we have our fitted logistic regression model let's grab our predicted values so we'll say predicted vals equals and we're going to say the name of our model dot predict Predict, and we're going to grab the predictions for the test set uh, because while we can look at both right now we're interested how does this model do on out of sample performance so we're going to say x z test beautiful okay let's run that so now that we have those predicted values, we can use them to assess the performance of the model. And this is gonna be a little bit in contrast to linear regression where we use things like mean squared error or uh, the R squared value to assess the performance of the model. Because logistic regression, remember, is predicting a category, in this case, whether or not a customer upgraded, we actually have different, more efficient ways of measuring the accuracy of our model. So in this case, we're gonna look at two things that are related. One is gonna be the accuracy score. So that's gonna be, does the predicted category from the model match the actual category from the data? And then we're gonna look at a confusion matrix, which basically tells us the same thing, but let me save that till then. Okay, so similar to mean squared error and R squared, we're gonna use the accuracy 
score function, and we're going to give it the actual values, y test, and then the predicted values, which we stored in predicted fouls, and this will print us out an accuracy score. So you can see that our model wasn't great, wasn't too bad. Our overall accuracy is about 56%, but let's pull up our confusion matrix next. All right, so now that we have our accuracy score, let's plot our confusion matrix to get a little bit more of a nuanced picture. So we're gonna use the function plot confusion matrix, and it's gonna take three arguments. It's gonna take the model, it's gonna take the actual predictors, so we're gonna say xz test, and then it's gonna take the actual outcome value, so y test. And when we run this, we're gonna get a nice confusion matrix. Beautiful, so you can see here that the confusion matrix, while it gives similar uh, information to what we looked at in the accuracy score, it gives us a lot more detail. So a confusion matrix has on the x-axis the predicted label and on the y-axis the true label of the data. So you can imagine if the true label is zero and the model predicted it's zero, that's a correct prediction. So those are the top left corner here. And if a model predicted one and it actually was one, that is also a correct prediction. You can see those in the bottom right hand corner. So the diagonal, the main diagonal of the confusion matrix, right, tells us whether or not there were accurate predictions for those two categories. So basically we could calculate our accuracy score by looking at the sum of the main diagonal divided by the total number of entries in our entire confusion matrix. So if the diagonal entries are our accurate predictions, the off diagonal in the other direction, these are our incorrect predictions. And basically you can see that there are two ways to be incorrect here, right? In the top right corner, we have actual zeros, so people who didn't upgrade but were predicted to upgrade. And on the bottom left, we have people who were predicted to upgrade and, or excuse me, were predicted not to upgrade and actually did upgrade. So what we're looking for in a confusion matrix is first and foremost, similar to the accuracy. How many times did our model get the prediction correct? But we also can look for different patterns in the matrix. For instance, are one type of error a lot more common than another type? In this case, our model seems to make a lot more errors in the top right corner where it's predicting someone's gonna upgrade and they don't compared to in the bottom left. We also might wanna look for cases where there's very few uh, observations of a certain category. So in this case, you can see that our model is often predicting that people are gonna upgrade and is rarely predicting that they won't. It's still predicting that they won't sometimes, but you can see there's a little bit of an off balance there. And this isn't concerning too much in this case, but you wanna be on the lookout for those weird patterns. Are there zeros for an entire column or an entire row in your confusion matrix? Is there any imbalance in the errors or just anything that looks a little bit off to you? That's what you want to look for when looking at these confusion matrices. So as you know, our purpose in building these predictive models is almost always to build a model that's going to be accurate on future data that we haven't seen before. And so I happen to have some future data for this data set. So we're going to load that in and we're gonna go ahead and grab that and use our model that we built previously in order to assess how well we do on this particular data set. Beautiful, so this data, like our original data, comes in in raw form, so we do have to still z-score. Luckily, we can use the z-score object we fit before in order to z-score this as well. So we're gonna say x new z equals uh, z-score, dot transform x new that's the new data the new predictors and so i'm going to go ahead and run that and then we can use everything that we've already made to grab our predicted values so we're going to say the name of our model dot predict x new z so these are going to be predictions that our model makes for this entirely new data set that we just imported all right so now that we've trained our model let's grab our accuracy score and our confusion matrix so accuracy score takes two variables. The first thing that it takes is the actual values, which we have to pull from the fashion new data frame. So we're gonna say fashion new bracket upgrade because that's the column that we're predicting. And then we are going to give it the predicted values, which we just stored in Ypred. 
So when we run this, we get an accuracy score. It's actually doing a little bit better than before, about 59.6% accuracy. But let's pull that confusion matrix so we can get a little more of a nuanced view. So while well, my preference is to use that plot confusion matrix function that we used before, there is technically one other way to grab a confusion matrix, and that's with the confusion matrix function um, and this takes the same arguments as accuracy score and all of our other <clears throat> model assessment so when I run this it's not going to be as pretty but it technically gives us the same information you can see the diagonals where we're correct and the off diagonals where we had incorrect guesses it's just not well labeled and a little harder to understand but if you're ever in a situation where you can't grab the plot confusion matrix or you need the individual values as an object this is a great way to go. All right, so, so far we have done everything in train test split, and we'll cover this again in the next Python and logistic regression lecture. But just to give you a preview, I wanna show you that you can use uh, things like k-fold or leave one out with logistic regression, not just with linear regression like we have in the past. So the first step to doing our k-fold cross-validation is going to be to grab our x and y variables. Actually, that's the wrong data frame name. So we're going to grab our x and y variables, and then we're going to create our k-fold object, which is going to be the thing that helps us do our k-fold cross-validation. So I'm going to use five folds, so n splits equals five. Uh, and now that I've set that up, all I need to do is set up our empty model and grab lists for anything that we want to store. So in this case, I'm going to store the model accuracy. So I'm going to say lr equals logistic regression. And then again, accuracy is the only thing that I'm gonna store from these models, so I'm gonna grab a, that, a list for that. Beautiful, now that that's set up, we can go for our k-fold loop. So we're gonna loop through the same way that we did with linear regression. We're gonna have our train indices and our test indices, and we're gonna use those to grab the rows that are in our train and test sets respectively. So now we can do our z-scoring, because again, we don't wanna do it before in case there's data leakage. So we can say z equals standard scalar, and then z dot fit transform x train by the way this is just one line that does both the fit and the transform for us at the same time so i'm going to say x train equals so I, this is going to fit on just the training set again we don't want any data leakage and then transform it and that way it's just you know less lines and then we're going to do x test equals z dot transform x test remember we don't ever want to refit on the training or on the testing set so we're making sure to not use fit or fit transform on the test set beautiful now that we have all of our z scores we can go ahead and fit our model so we're going to say model equals lr dot fit x train y train and then now that we have a fitted model we can actually go ahead and grab the accuracy so that we can look at it once our entire k-fold loop is done running so i'm going to say ac dot append and then we're going to say accuracy score and we're going to give it the actual values for the test set y test and then we have to grab the predicted values from our model. So we can actually do that in this function. We can say model.predict x test, and that will just grab the predicted values for us. So in this case, we're only storing the out of sample accuracy, but we could also store the training set accuracy. This would be especially important when we're looking for uh, whether there's overfitting because we have to compare the train and the test set accuracy. So you can always grab whatever metrics you're interested in from this k-fold loop. All right, now that we've got that, let's run it and then we're gonna print both all of the accuracies for all of our folds as well as the mean accuracy. Beautiful. So you can see that our model has a range of accuracies ranging from about 54% to 64.5% accuracy. Overall, though, the accuracy is something that we've seen before, about 58.7%. All right, I'm going to leave it there for today, but I will see you for your next lecture.